Things are looking up for the Jets. We're talking reasons for Jets positivity today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Thursday, October 19th, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com. Thanking you so much for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help us out and help other Jets fans find the show. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports ice picks not locked on nfl and use code all lowercase locked on nfl for a first deposit match of up to 100 dollars. today we're going to talk about reasons for jets optimism over the final 11 weeks of the season the jets got through what was not just the most difficult schedule of any team in 2023 through the first six weeks that's one of the most difficult first six weeks any team has had in recent memory in the nfl jets had a a lot of elite position. They had to play Buffalo. They had to play Dallas. They had to play Kansas City. They had to play Philadelphia. You know, some more winnable games in theory against Denver and New England, although the Jets lost one of them. But they made it through three and three. And I'll tell you something. I think anybody would have told you heading into the season, even if Aaron Rodgers is a quarterback, you would have signed up for three and three in a heartbeat because this was a really tough early stretch. It's kind of funny because when the Season begins, you kind of map out the schedule, what you think the easy games are going to be, what you think the hard games are going to be. And typically I warn against this because sometimes you get surprised by who's good and who's not so good. Sometimes injuries dictate how things change. In this situation, though, if you look at the way the NFL has played out through the first six weeks of the season, it really looks exactly as we expected it to. The tough games were mostly in the early part of the season. Now, there are some difficult games upcoming. But the Jets really needed to just survive the first six weeks. You could not fall into like a one and five stretch, an 0 and six stretch, because then, you know, it starts to like kind of turn into like a vortex where everything goes downhill. There's so much negativity around the team that even if the schedule gets easier, it's the season's already gone. The Jets were able to avoid that. So I think you got to feel good about where this team is right now. And they are heading into the easiest part, the easier part of the schedule. You know, the first six were were the tough part. The first six were where the season could be lost. You can't clinch a playoff spot in the first six weeks, but you can lose a playoff spot pretty easily in the first six weeks. And the Jets have been able to avoid that. And that's an important thing because even though the Jets are three and three, the way that they've gotten these three wins, I I don't think is super sustainable playing the way that they're playing. And what I mean by that is not that you take the wins off the row, off the board. Those wins count for the rest of the season. I'm not saying that you, you dismiss victories. What I'm saying is if the Jets play the caliber of football they've played through the first six games, or maybe not so much the caliber, but the style of football they played through the first six games, you know, they're they're gonna have some issues. But I think that there's reason to believe that this team's going to be able to play a more sustainable brand of football. So what do I mean by that? Well, you know, in two of their wins, they got four turnovers. Now, I'm not saying the Jets defense has been anything, you know, was bad, but what I'm saying is that you can play excellent defense. Most weeks, you're not going to force four turnovers. The Jets' turnovers have come on very good defensive plays, but good defensive plays don't necessarily mean you get the ball back. You know, they, in the, especially in the Philadelphia game, I think three of the four turnovers, the ball just like ended up going exactly where the Jets needed it to, to, to force a turnover. So it's not saying the Jets' defense is necessarily playing poorly, but it's saying that, you know, expecting to get four turnovers just because you're playing excellent defense is not necessarily something you can expect going forward. And on the other side, I don't think the Jets have gotten enough out of their offense. They're bottom 11 in terms of uh, points per game, despite getting all these turnovers, four turnovers in two of their wins. I mean, they're near the top of the league in turnovers forced, yet they still have bottom 11 production on the offensive side, uh, on the offensive side of the ball, when we're talking about points per game, they're also a bottom six passing efficiency team. If we're talking about yards per play, passing the football, but I think that there's reason to believe that this will change. The Jets are Jets are probably not going to force as many turnovers going forward, but the softer part of the schedule is coming up. In the first six weeks of the season, the Jets have played three games against teams with top ten scoring defenses. So that's I mean that's not easy. 
that's one of the reasons they've been held down is that they've played excellent defensive football teams over the next 11 games. They only have two games against teams that are currently top 10 scoring defenses in terms of points per game. So this thing gets a lot easier. In fact, four of the next five games, if we're just looking at points allowed per game, jets are playing below average defenses. So the jets have really leaned on their defense, especially the, the, the defense forcing big plays. Now, I think like a lot of people are going to come through these first six weeks saying like this Jets defense is dynamic, they're playmaking. And yeah, they are. But you can't, nobody forces turnovers at that clip. You know, DJ Reed made the infamous comparison to the 1985 Bears before the start of the season. 85 Bears aren't going to force four, four turnovers a game. You know, you, you just can't count on that to win football games. What you need, you need better offense. You need the Jets, the Jets need to have points. And they need to produce more points on their own terms. You know, a lot of the Jets scoring drives this year have been set up by turnovers. Jets defense is going to be very good down the stretch. They'll still force turnovers, but they're not going to force them at the same clip. What they need is the offense to to sustain more drives. And because they're going up against defenses that aren't quite as good, I think there's every reason to believe that they'll be able to do it. So I hope you're understanding what I'm saying here. I'm not suggesting the Jets defense has been bad. I think the Jets' defense is good. It was has been good. I think it will continue to be good. I just don't think that you can con- continue to lean on your ability to force that many turnovers in order to win games, because every number that I've suggested, I've seen suggest that you know turnovers are more random than you think. They're not so much about skill, because again, Jets' defense was excellent last year. They weren't necessarily great at forcing turnovers, though. If turnovers are kind of random because. You know, you kind of have it like the play Jermaine Johnson hits Jalen Hurts and the ball pops in the air. That ball could have easily popped in the air and gone to an Eagles receiver. It could have fallen to the ground. It just happened to go right to Bryce Hall. You know, good play, but it could have easily not resulted in a turnover. So what you need is your offense to just be able to do produce more. And of course, you know, a lot of this is going to fall on Zach Wilson, who, you know, you can debate how much better he looks. I don't think there's any question that Zach Wilson is an improved quarterback over what we saw a year ago. I don't think there's any question that Zach Wilson is more capable of leading an offense than he was a year ago. And you hope that with more experience, and I think a lot of this is he's getting more experience. Things are slowing down for him a bit. You hope that continues over the second half of the season. And you hope that there's more production also in part because he's producing it because the game, because he's figuring out how to put the pieces together. So when I look at this, I say, hey, the Jets got to produce more offense, but I see a lot that suggests the Jets will be able to produce more offense going forward, and I think that that's the type of thing that will help the Jets win games and continue to continue on this path that they're on, because it's a very exciting time to be a New York Jets fan. You know, I think we all believed when they got Aaron Rodgers, okay, maybe this is the year where things break right for us, and then, of course, he goes down. And right when he goes down, I think we're all thinking, oh, geez, not again. Well, Jets have had something to say about that. It doesn't matter how you got through these first six games. You know, they just had to find a way to get three wins. You know, you don't, you don't worry about whether that was sustainable or not. Now, now's the time we worry about whether it's sustainable or how we sustain these victories going forward. And it's going to be leaning more on the offense. Jets just have not gotten enough out of their offense so far. I think that there's a real opportunity, though. I think that there's a really good chance that they'll be able to going forward. Now, as we continue this Thursday edition of the Locked on Jets podcast, we're going to turn our attention to the other side of the ball. That defense I told you about forcing turnovers, I don't know that they're going to force turnovers at the same clip, but I do think that they're going to start producing more big plays in another way. I think they're going to start converting more of their pressures into sacks. And we'll discuss that in more detail, detail continuing this Thursday edition of Locked on Jets. This episode of Locked on Jets is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird dogs make you look good. Bird dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better because regular shorts are made of a stick, a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just as good as khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. And bird dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that helps you keep droop cool and dry all day long. And bird dogs are functional for any occasion, golf, a date, an evening out, going to the pool, working out, lounging, going to work. I I mean, I'm not the most fashionable guy in the world, but I think I look good in bird dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL or enter promo code locked on NFL at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. Again, that's birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. 
Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen or first watch every day. And a big shout out to you, Everydayers. This is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets. We have new episodes each day through the week, Monday through Friday. And then bonus episodes as needed. We're heading into the Jets bye week. They're three and three. You know, sometimes you go into the bye week three and three and you're disappointed. You know, you wanted to be better than 500. For the Jets, it was all about survival. It was all about not destroying the season by starting out like something like one and five, zero oh and six. Mission accomplished. Jets have done an excellent job with that. And you have to feel good about this team heading into the second half of the season. We know the schedule is easier coming up. Not only is the schedule easier, not only are the opponents easier, Jets are going to play easier opponents. So of the two sides of the ball, the defense is obviously stronger. Um, but the Jets offense, which is the weaker of the two units, is going to go up against easier defenses, which is certainly going to be helpful for this team. But the dominant unit for the Jets is the defense. And I think that they have something that they can unlock going forward. And I've talked about how I don't think they're going to be able to uh, force turn turnovers at the same rate. But what I do think is going to happen is, and this might balance it out, you make it less turnovers. It seems like a, a virtual lock to me that the Jets will get more sacks, however, going forward. This defensive line has been a little bit disappointing. And I think a lot of that goes, I mean, some of it goes back to the inconsistency playing the run, but a lot of it goes that they're just not producing sacks at a very high rate. Uh, they're eighth from the bottom in, in terms of sacks right now among NFL teams. But here's the thing. They're number one enforcing pressure. So there's actually a stat you saw if you were on social media on Thursday that the Jets are actually number one forcing pressure. So what does that mean? Does that mean they're just having a tough time finishing? Well, you never know. I mean, things there are there are exceptions to the rule, but if you look historically through the NFL, what tends to happen on teams where there's a big discrepancy between sacks and pressures is the sacks follow the pressures. The pressures don't follow the sacks. What do I mean by that? Well, a team that has a lot of sacks but few pressures, typically their sack numbers are going to start going down. And the inverse is also true. If you have a lot of pressures but few sacks, typically your sack numbers are going to go up because obviously sacks are sacks are generated because you you get pressure to the quarterback. So if you're if you're getting a lot of pressure, the sacks are eventually going to come. Right now, Quinn and Williams only has half a sack so far this season. And one thing I always encourage you to do is don't just do box score scouting because I think somebody who's only looking at the stats will say Quinn and Williams, well, he's not having quite the year. He's, you know, he's, he's having a very disappointing year. That's not true, though. Quinn and Williams is having an excellent season. If you're watching the film, he's dominating on a play to play basis. If not at the same level he was a year ago, it's close. He just, and he's near the top of when we're talking about defensive tackles in the NFL, he's near the top of the league in pressures. He just, for whatever reason, hasn't been able to finish the job yet this season. Part of it's probably the, the Jets, you know, they faced a lot of mobile quarterbacks so far this year. They faced Josh Allen, they faced Jalen Hurts, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes. They faced really tough quarterbacks to bring down. And obviously the Jets have been have been a team that's had issues with quarterback scrambles this year. Well, a lot of that goes back to, it's not necessarily a problem with the defensive scheme. A lot of it's, you know, just they're going up against really good quarterbacks, guys who are very elusive in the backfield. I think that, that that's going to change going forward. And I expect Quinn and Williams' sack total to go up, but I feel like the Jets' sack total is also going to go up. It, it's kind of weird because I feel like in some ways the defense has been, you know, not not as great as I was expecting it to be on a play-to-play -play basis. I mean, I, as I told you, on Sunday, you know, the, the storyline was that most people came away with was that the Jets' defense absolutely dominated the Philadelphia Eagles. But I came, kind of came away from that game thinking, like, the plays were just timely. You know, they, they got the turnovers that they needed, but they didn't force many three and outs. I felt like on a play to play basis, I've seen the Jets, the Jets defense be better, even if the results were never better. I mean, you can't, you can't complain against the, about the results. Jets playing the last undefeated team in the NFL holds them to 14 points, forces four turnovers. That's excellent. But I feel like the, the Jets defense can be stronger. And I, a lot of that goes back to just the defensive line getting back, doing what it does well. They're forcing pressures. The sack totals just haven't been there, but they'll get there. They will. And this is important because, again, I, I think that if the turnovers are going down, you have to compensate in some other way. And a sack destroys an offensive series. You know, I mean, there are big play offenses that can overcome it. But let's say you get a five yard sack on first down, second and 15. Most offenses are not are not built to come back from that. You know, maybe when you play Miami, they will be. But, you know, defenses, a, def a defense that can put quarterbacks on the ground. You know, it's going to have a, it's going to create a problem. And, you know, Bryce Huff's having an outstanding season for the Jets. You know, you look across the rest of the defensive line, it's been a little disappointing. I think, it, you know, um, 
I think Jermaine Johnson's kind of come on the last two weeks, but you know, you're not getting a lot out of Carl Lawson. John Franklin Myers is playing solid, but he's not exactly finishing yet. So the question is, is it just a case where your defensive linemen are failing to finish? Or is it a case where you know, maybe they're just a little unlucky? Maybe you're facing the wrong opponents. I, I think it's the latter. I think that these guys are, you know, the results aren't quite there yet, but the process is good. And in a lot of ways in the NFL, if the process is good, the results will eventually follow. If you're getting into a quarterback's face consistently, eventually the quarterback's going to end up on the ground. And the, the, again, the reverse is true. I remember there was a guy who played with Atlanta, Vic Beasley, back in 2016. He led the NFL in sacks that season, but he wasn't producing pressures at a high rate. Well, what do you think happened? His sack totals were never really that very good again after that season. It was kind of a year where he caught lightning in a bottle. One of the things you learn is that getting pressure, getting beating your offensive lineman, that's a skill. That's something you can replicate over and over and over. Once you've beaten your offensive lineman, putting the quarterback on the ground, a lot of that goes back to the quarterback's ability to evade pressure, whether the quarterback steps up into the pocket or steps into a sack. A lot of it's, you know, it does the quarterback have the mobility to evade that pressure? That you know, a lot of that's just not based on what the defensive line does. And again, I think the Jets, you know, we, we, I think you can go back to the schedule, which we talked about a bit in the first segment. In the first segment, we were talking about the offenses, uh, the, the, the Jets' offense facing easier defenses going forward. Well, I think the Jets' defense is going to face quarterbacks who maybe aren't as adept at escaping. I know, if you know, look, you still have Josh Allen. There's still going to be some games where it's not going to be so easy to put the quarterback on the ground. But if you're looking through the list of quarterbacks who are most difficult to sack in the NFL, at least as far as their mobility is concerned, as far as their ability to make plays on the ground happen, it's tough. You know, There's not really a tougher first uh, six games you could have than what the Jets faced. Uh, so I think going forward, you'll expect bigger plays, more big plays on defense as far as sacks, maybe less turnovers. But I think the Jets are going to be able to put quarterbacks on the ground at a higher rate than they have at the early part of the season. The other thing that's benefiting the Jets right now, I think their buy was placed at a really fortunate time on the schedule. Usually I think the later the buy, the better, but there are always exceptions. And we're going to talk about why this year might be an exception for the New York Jets, why an early buy might benefit them. That's ahead here on this Thursday edition of Locked on Jets. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Again, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. There's no Jets game this weekend, so how do you make things interest interesting? Well, you go to FanDuel. The app is really easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. You know, there, there's plenty that should entice you this weekend as we just deal with the one regular season weekend where there's no Jets football. FanDuel has you covered. Again, spreads, player props, over-unders. They got all that, and they have more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. Again, it's FanDuel slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Jace Medical. The Jace case is a personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can also customize your case and add additional life-saving medications based on your unique needs. Jace Medical all now offers customability for your Jace case with dozens of add-on medications. Choose the medications that fit, best fit you and your family's unique needs. You can buy a gift card for your family or loved ones so they can get a Jace case of their own. Go to jacemedical.com and enter code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. Again, that's promo code locked on. It's one word with no space L O C K E D O N at Jace Medical, J A S E Medical.com. Again, Jace Medical.com. Enter code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Thursday. Talking about reasons for Jets optimism coming out of the bye. I mean, I'm sure Jets fans are plenty optimistic after this three and three start. You know, we knew going into the bye that if they came out with a 500 record, they'd be in great shape in the AFC playoff race. Well, I think the top, the bye itself, the timing came at a perfect time for this team. I think in a neutral scenario, I say this all the time. If you're you're an everyday, or you may be tired of hearing me saying this, but in a neutral scenario, you know, going into the season without knowing in advance what's going to happen, I generally like my buys like, you know, mid to late November. And that's just because the NFL season is a very grueling event for players. They take a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. 
you know, I always like the idea of getting that week off to rest before the stretch run, being as fresh as possible for the final few weeks of the season. But there are, are always exceptions, and you have to see how the season plays out. And for the Jets, I think the week six buy is actually kind of perfect. And part of it is because it kind of separates the tough part of the schedule from the easier part of the schedule. I think coming out of this, the Giants always seem to me to be a team that was a prime candidate for regression. You know, last year they went to the playoffs. I did not think that they were going to be as good this year. I think that there was, you know, a lot, lot broke their way a year ago when they made it to the divisional round. I was not expecting them to be as good. That said, I was not expecting them to be this bad this year. So it's a nice, easy way to come out of the bye, at least on paper. It's a game the Jets, I would dare say, the Jets should win. But beyond that, I think it's also helpful for the Jets to come out of the bye because with the, with after the tough first six games, because of what I've been talking about before, that these first six weeks, it was just figure out a way to win the games and then try and figure out what you need to do going forward. The Jets need to establish more of a rhythm on offense. Well, now the coaching staff has has had a couple of days to think things over. They've had a week to clear their mind. They did not have an opponent to prepare for this week. So they've had an opportunity to figure out what's not working. How do we fix it? And even more than that, I think, you know, the obvious thing to say is injuries. This Jets team went into the bye pretty banged up. Uh, both starting corners missed this past Sunday's game against the Eagles, Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed dealing with concussions. Well, you know, you hope that you get them back. It's always unpredictable when a player is going to be cleared for a concussion, but it's nice to not have a game this weekend because even though the Jets won and even though the defense only allowed 14 points, this is obviously a much better team with Sauce and DJ in the lineup, and it they add more to the defense. You know, you don't have to play quite as conservative in your coverage shells when you have two excellent corners as you do when you're playing Bryce Hall and, frankly, a bunch of guys who are probably practice squad level players. So it's it's nice nice opportunity for them to get key players rested up you know on the offensive line we still don't really have inform much information on what's going on with joe tipman right now so the fact that they have the bye this week well it kind of helps the jets in two ways one is it's a game it's an extra week for tipman to rest up now if tipman ends up missing some time it's also good because it gives the jets a little bit of extra time to work in west uh schweitzer if uh, assuming he's going to be the replacement at, at right guard he's the guy who stepped in against the eagles Offensive line is very much about continuity. The the caliber of play you get there is based uh, in part by skill, but it's also based in part by how comfortable guys are playing next to each other. So perhaps a couple extra practices for these guys to work together. It's not an ideal situation. You want Tipman in there in part because tipman has been an excellent player thus far as a rookie. He was thrown into a tough spot, new position, not much time to prepare but he's done a really solid job at the right guard spot. But even if he's not ready to go, you know, you at least have an opportunity to uh, work in Schweitzer a little bit more. And then you also have a chance to assess what's, you, know, you, just, you have a chance to reassess guys that you're playing. I mean, we, we know Dalvin Cook should not be getting the snaps he's getting. And it, fortunately, it seems like his playing time's going down. Randall Cobb, I mean, you'd hope that the Jets coaching staff eventually figures out that Cobb really is not giving you anything. Just a lot of opportunities to kind of reassess things. It's a good point in time. It's a good spot in the spot on the calendar, a good spot in the season for the Jets and their coaching staff to think about how they're doing things, reassess, you know, make make the changes that are necessary, and hopefully institute things that will lead this team to success going forward. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you're listening to the show on a podcast source and enjoy it, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy this episode, give it a big thumbs up. Helps us out. Helps other Jets fans find the show. Hope you have a great Thursday, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow to close out the week.